Welcome back to the Thoughtful Techie Cloud YouTube channel. Today we're going to jump right in and talk about the AWS Well Architected Review, specifically what it is and how you prepare for the review. Now before we get started, let me give you a little bit of background. If you don't already know, I have worked with AWS for over six years. I've done a number of AWS World Architected reviews on customer workloads, so I know a thing or two about how to do a World Architected review and what to look for and what good looks like. So pay close attention because you're gonna learn a lot in this session. What can you expect from this particular session? Well, first, I'm gonna intro you to the AWS Well Architected Framework. Second, I'm going to go over the core tenets of what it means to be well architected. The tenets, sometimes referred to as pillars, are as follows. There are six of them, they're very important. Number one is security. The second one is reliability. The third is performance. The fourth is cost optimization. The fifth is operational excellence. And the last, but certainly not least, and the newest member of the World Architected Framework Pillars is sustainability. The third thing we're gonna take a look at is which workloads you should review. Like I say, you can have many, many workloads and you may not have the time and energy to review every single one of them. So you need to prioritize. I'm gonna go over what that looks like to be able to categorize what you should review. Fourth, we're gonna talk about key well-architected stakeholders that should be reviewed, uh, that should be a part of the review process. And then five, we'll close things out and discuss next steps. So, what is the Well Architected Framework? The Well Architected Framework provides access to knowledge developed over tens of thousands of architecture reviews. The Well Architected Review started off many years ago and AWS Solutions Architects would review customer workloads. And over time, there were patterns that were formed. These patterns were later aligned over several iterations into a framework that aligned to these six pillars. The well architected framework evolves over time and it continues to get better as the AWS cloud evolves. It's designed to help those who consume AWS and AWS services to always be able to leverage the best practices and reduce architectural issues and minimize risk to your business. The AWS World Architected Framework is essentially general design principles that facilitate what a good design looks like in cloud. So some of the things at a very high level that the Well Architected Review enables you to do is things like stop having to guess about capacity. It allows you to test your systems at scale. It allows you to build data-driven architectures. You can employ automation so now that you can easily enable experimentation. It allows for the evolution of the architecture. And finally, it allows and ensures that your architectural is sustainable and has the earth in mind as you build. So as I said, the AWS World Architected Framework is really a set of questions that allows you to evaluate how an architecture is aligned to AWS best practices. And it's broken down into those six pillars that I mentioned earlier, security, reliability, performance efficiency, cost optimization, operational excellence, and sustainability. And now we're gonna dive into each one of these pillars to dig a little bit deeper. So for the security pillar, security is all about protecting information, those systems that host that information and the assets while still being able to deliver business value through risk assessment and mitigation of those strategies. The reliability pillar is the ability of a system to recover from infrastructure or service disruptions dynamically and acquiring compute resources to meet the demand and mitigate any disruptions such as misconfigurations or transient network issues. Performance efficiency is the efficient use of computing resources to meet requirements as well as maintaining that efficiency as the demand changes and technologies evolve. 
The cost optimization pillar is all about assessing your ability to avoid and eliminate it unnecessary cost and suboptimal resources that are not optimized and just wasting money and cost. And you use those savings to reinvest back into your business. Operational excellence is all about practicing best operational practices and procedures used to manage your production workloads, such as run books and playbooks. Sustainability is about understanding the impacts of the services used, quantifying those impacts through the entire workload lifecycle and applying design principles and best practices to reduce these impacts. Now, let's look at what workloads should be reviewed. This is not an all exhaustive list. This is just six overarching areas that you need to think about. The first is, could damage be caused to your business, reputation, or revenue streams given this particular workload? Number two, is this workload a foundational business applications such as benefits, payroll, etc.? Now, let me just back up just a minute in case it's not clear. When I refer to a workload, this is really another word for the architecture that underpins either the application or service that provides value to your customers. So anytime you hear me say workload, just think of an application or service and that, that the particular architecture which is associated with that. Number three, so it looks like bullets two and three are a duplicate, so we'll just keep on moving. Number four, does your application have an, an aggressive recovery point objective or recovery time objective? A recovery time objective is the time it takes for you to be able to recover your application. The tighter that window, the more complex the architecture is going to be and the more critical the business deems that application. Same thing for the recovery point objective. When you have a failure, this is the amount of data that the business is willing to lose based on the time that application uh, fails. The smaller that number is uh, in minutes, the more complex that application is to architect and thus the more critical your business deems that application and the more likely that's something you want to take a look at in terms of the review. Uh, number five here, data security. Are you having to achieve compliance requirements such as HIPAA or PII? or PCI. This is definitely a workload that you want to submit to the review. Also, the last, number six, time-bound event-driven workloads that are mapped to big events. Could be things like the Super Bowl or the Oscars or the open enrollment. Uh, in, in, a, uh, in summary, a workload and whether or not it should be reviewed is ultimately up to you. And these are just some guidelines of things you need to look at to consider. Now, a well-architected review needs to involve a good representation from several cross-functional teams. I've indicated just a few here. The first I would suggest is security. You're going to want to have somebody there at the table sitting with you as you conduct the review that has good insights on the security of that application and service and the architecture. You need to have somebody that's familiar with the operations, knowing what it takes to operate that particular application and service. Networking. What are the ins and outs of the networking of that particular application or service? You definitely need to have an app dev team there or representation from that team. Enterprise architects. If you have enterprise architects within your organization, definitely you want those enterprise architects to have a seat at the table. And then, ideally, somebody from business and financial, they're going to be very keen on the cost. Now, let me tell you, in, out in the field, in real life, depending on what size uh, organization you are, if you're an enterprise customer, sometimes it's easy to get uh, these particular roles to have a seat at the table. However, if you're a startup, you may wear several hats. That's okay as long as the collection of people 
that's involved has an intimate knowledge of the architecture, you'll be good to go. And that's a quick overview of the AWS World Architecture Framework and review process. In terms of next steps, here are two things I highly recommend you do. Read the AWS Well Architected Framework white paper in its entirety. It is one of the best technical documents you can read to learn AWS best practices. And you will use the knowledge you learn in this technical document for years and years to come as it relates to building AWS architectures aligned with best practices. The second thing I want you to do is explore the AWS Well Architected tool. The AWS Well Architected tool is actually a service within your AWS account. This is where you're going to conduct the review. Become familiar with that tool. Also, use the information I've provided to you here today as a frame of reference for the future. If you haven't already, consider subscribing to the Thoughtful Techie Cloud YouTube channel. I look forward to seeing you in future videos. Take care.